night, Sports Channel presents the 53rd meeting between the Seton Hall Pirates and the Fordham Rams. And hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Brain, along with Christopher Russo. Tonight, we've got a matchup of two metropolitan area college basketball teams that a lot is expected of this season. For the Fordham Rams, they're co-favorites to win the Patriot League in that conference's inaugural season. And for the Seton Hall Pirates, a lot of people pick them to be a sleeper in perhaps one of the toughest conferences in the country. Now, Christopher, big difference between the Patriot League and the Big East, no doubt about it, but not when these two teams get on the court. Great rivalry you said at the open 53rd meeting, and Fordham leads the series 28-24 and one last year down at Walsh, 65-60, a day after the Ramon Ramos situation, but beat them last year in Seton Hall. You know for a fact that Seton Hall comes here tonight pretty ticked off that they lost to Fordham. Should be an interesting ball game tonight. Not only do they come here ticked off, they come up, they come up here to Fordham University very much banged up. A lot of injuries for P.J. Colissimo's club. You got it, uh, Michael. Three players not even here, not even dressed because of injuries. And uh, Terry here, their main guy off that who shoots those threes and a good shooter, has a bad ankle. He's going to guard John Prelu. That's a big factor tonight, the injury status of Seton Hall. And it's the first road game for a lot of these freshmen. That's a factor here tonight, too. And it's a tough gym. Terry DeHair, of course, injured that ankle in the opening season win against Iona. He's got to have the big game because it is basically still a young team. He's the key to the offense. A very young ball club. They play a lot of freshmen. They're play a lot of people they're gonna play that man-to-man -man defense all over the place key to this ball game you know Seton Hall is not a great shooting team nor is Fordham so look for John Freddie Herzog and Prelude to shoot those jumpers for Fordham and Day Harris got in a big afternoon shooting those 20 footers for Seton Hall this could be a tough ball game tonight it's a great gym 3400 people it's gonna be a fun ball game tonight here at Rose Kill. now the big key for Fordham in the middle of course is Damon Lopez the six foot nine center he will not start tonight disciplinary action from coach Nick Bakarczyk the reason being he missed today's shootout just happened to oversleep, so Nick McCarchick says he's going to sit down to start the game. Kevin McBride will start in his place. Lopez, you know, is going to be in there soon. He's got a tough task because he's got to guard Anthony Ava, but Lopez is really coming on. Now, I'll tell you, Lopez will be in the first 40 seconds tonight, I guarantee you that. He was in foul trouble against Notre Dame and was played a little tentative against Navy. They're a win here. They're only one of the year, one and one on Saturday. Lopez, not much up-court strength for Fordham after Lopez. He has to score this 17-15 and get some rebounds tonight, and as you say, control the event, who has a lot of double doubles with the rebounds and the points. Tough spot for Lopez tonight. Of course, it's a special night for PJ Carlissimo. Anytime he comes back to Fordham, PJ went to college here at Fordham University here in the Bronx. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip off coming up. It's Fordham and Seton Hall right here on Sports Channel. It's all coming up right after this. Air's fleet is in the air by 8 a.m. every business day. December on Sports Channel. We deliver bundles of holiday cheering. The Devils and Islanders clash with the Capitals, Flyers, Penguins, and others for 22 exciting games. The Nets tip off against the NBA's best. Ewing's Knicks, Carl Malone and the Jazz, Dominic's Hawks, and much more. Sports Channel America's got dynamite college juice. Notre Dame, Seton Hall, and the Palm Beach Classic. Plus, the NHL's hottest teams battle for league supremacy. Sports Channel in December. A lot to get excited about. Fordham University one and one on the young season. Seton Hall won their opener against Iono this past Saturday night. Good metropolitan area college basketball matchup here on Sports Channel. Let's get tonight's starting lineups with public address announcer Mike Walseski. Gymnasium for tonight's game between the Seton Hall Pirates and the Fordham University Rams. Here are the starting lineups. First for Seton Hall. At the guards, number 20, Oliver Taylor. And number 24, Terry DeHaan. At center, number 32, Anthony Avent. And at the forwards, number 55, Arturos Karnishevas. And number 22, Gordon Winchester. 
The assistant coaches are Rod Baker, Tom Sullivan, Bruce Hamburger, and Pat Elliott. And the head coach of the Pirates, B.J. Carlesimo. And now, here they are, your Rams of Fordham University. At the guards, number 20, Mike Rice. And number 13, John Prelo. At center, number 45, Kevin McBride. And at the forwards, number 24, Sanford Jenkins. And number 23, Fred Herzog. The assistant coaches are John Fitzpatrick, Nick McCarchuk III, and Paul Hewitt. And the head coach, Nick McCarchuk. Tonight's officials are Mickey Crowley, Frank Scantiano. Nick McCarchuk and the Rams trying to make it two in a row over to Seton Hall. We'll have the opening tip-off coming up after this. If you live near Eatontown, New Jersey, giving will be a lot easier this year. Nobody Beats the Wiz is opening another superstore. Thursday, November the 29th at 94 Highway 36 in Eatontown. Be there. Giving beats everything, and nobody beats the Wiz. For Christmas, wind. as always, nobody beats the Wiz. Good officiating crew here at the Rose Hill Gym tonight for the Fordham Seton Hall matchup. Mickey Crowley in the middle, Jack Hannon on the left, and Frank Scagliotti. Good crew. Work a lot of Big East games, these gentlemen. Watch Fred Herzog if Fordham gets the ball. They'd like to get him started there, Mike, with three-point shots right off the bat. Crowley does the honors. Carnesius controls the tap for Seton Hall, and Terry DeHair goes right to work with the jumper. Tough shot. He's a streak shooter, Mike. Led this team in scoring last year as a freshman off to a good start so far this year. And obviously tonight, just underway, for him at Seton Hall. Mike Rice, the senior captain, pulls up. Don't get many points out of Rice. Same thing again. It was great, the offensive Continues to improve every year for Fordham. Nick McCarchick, though, likes his leadership on the court, obviously. Naming him captain this year as Fordham opens up. In the man. Fordham looks to be in the man. Even. Can't get it. Winchester on the offensive glass. Even again on the offensive glass. Good defense from the Rams. Here they go on the break. Good block by Jenkins there, Michael. Their best defensive athlete, Stanford is. Sanford Jenkins and Damon Lopez, both good shot blockers. Of course, Lopez not in there. McBride, the starting center tonight, down low, number 45. There's Jenkins in the paint. Offense out of him is Gravy, too. Him and Rice so far. I don't know if Jenkins wanted to bank that one from that angle. Rams lead it 4-2. to two. We've played just about a minute. Prelo almost steals it from Taylor. Rice helps out. And a jump ball. For the basketball. Of course, alternate possession will go to the Rams. But again, Oliver Taylor was a two-guard in high school and a two-guard down at junior college. Really only his second year at the point. Might have some problems with that tonight. Both teams play extremely aggressive man-to-man -man defense. You don't shoot a high percentage when you play Fordham or Seton Hall. You got that right. Nice inbound pass to Herzog and a turnaround. Good move by Freddie. Credit Mike Rice, pretty assist to the Rams quickly with a 6-2 lead. Prelude all over Taylor, almost another steal. Winchester. It's all right. Fordham, you got to let somebody shoot those 12-footers. Might as well be him. Good shooting early on for both clubs. Two-point lead for the Rams. 18 minutes to play first half. Mike Green and Christopher Russo here on Sports Channel. Fun night. 
Great atmosphere here at the Rose Hill Gym. 1926, Mike. This gym is older than the Palestra, if you can believe that. Freelow almost loses it and does. Terry DeHair calls for a hold. That's a tough call. Very important there, Michael, for Fordham offensively to get Herzog and Prelu off. Herzog's only shot 34% in the two games so far. He needs to hit those jumpers. Did not hit them against Notre Dame 4 out of 19. They struggled. He shoots and Prelu shoots. It's going to be a tough game tonight for Seton Hall. There's no questioning the Rams' defense, but they've got to shoot the ball well to beat a club of this caliber. Surprise Lopez ain't in yet. <laughs> Must have been one heck of a sleep. Of course, if you're just joining us, Damon Lopez sitting out the start of the game. Disciplinary action from Coach Nick McCarchick because he missed the shootout today or the shoot-around. Jenkins can't get it to fall. Fight for the rebound. McBride hustling underneath. And another hell ball situation. Seton Hall's possession. And here comes uh, Lopez. Take a peek. He struggled. First couple of games. Played well against Navy, but he's a little tentative when he gets in foul trouble. Really have problems. Two out of five, and he fouled out against Ellis and Notre Dame in the NIT opener there, Michael. Nick Bikarczyk showing, not playing any favorites. Sit down his big guy to start this one. So a big call for Kevin McBride, who's guarding Avent now. I haven't seen Carl Schoenemann shoot the ball yet. Allie Taylor, three-pointer. Average 35 a game in high school. In New York, for Rockaway. Took the long route to Seton Hall at Miami Dade North. Again, good pressure on defense. Rice has trouble handling it, baseline. McBride, back out. That's a two-pointer from Rice. Wow. Not necessarily a good offensive player, but so far he's got two baskets. Four points for Rice, 8-7 lead for the Rams, 17 minutes to play first half. Karnisha was inside the Avent, double team quickly. Nice post move from Avent is called. We'll get the foul against Kevin McBride, so Avent will shoot two. And as he says that, here comes Damon Lopez. And McBride will take a seat. They got a decent two minutes to three minutes out of McBride there, Mike. B.J. Carlissimo going for his 200th career win as Lopez comes in. He misses three minutes and five seconds of action. Avent, one of the few guys on this ball club, maybe the only guy who played at the final champion, final four team two years ago. He was a sophomore. See, for Lopez, it's not a real major incident. He overslept, missed the shoot around. So Nick McCarchick just giving a sigh, want to get a little discipline. But then again, doesn't want to punish the kid too much. Not a bad idea either. Let uh, McBride get into the flow of this game. They're going to need him a little bit tonight because of the size factor for Seton Hall. They need to get uh, some help up front. Anthony Avent, who just continues to improve, toured with the Big East All-Star team in the Soviet Union and Finland this past summer, and it's really shown in his game. He gives Seton Hall a one-point lead. Here's the press. Now, they're going to do this a lot, and it's up to Rice to get the ball up. They like to double-team off the press. Ali Taylor, good man defender, guarding Mike Rice. Lopez, right away, shoots it up. Wow. Led for them last year in field goal percentage there, Mike. First time he handles the ball, cans it for two. Nice pass inside to Avent. And a foul called on Jenkins. Sanford Jenkins' first personal. They'll call it in the act. So Avent back to the free throw line. We have seen a formula for Seton Hall here already there, Michael. But Avent getting some layups. There's a nice pass that time by Dayhair. Good bounce pass. Got Jenkins up. And the foul. And then did not attempt any free throws against Iona in their 10-point win on Saturday at the Walsh Gym. Game you right. Which is unusual because, you know, this season, he's a little more physical inside, has developed those post moves, so he's going to draw a lot of fouls. Double-double guy. Rebounds and points. Perfect double three. digits in both. Perfect in three attempts so far from the line. We're tied at 10. Crowd still filing in here at the Rose Hill Gym. A little disappointed early. That Later, so right? Crowd. It's like the forum. <laughs> <laughs> and Avent now with four points. A one-point lead for the Hall. 16-33 to play first half. More More pressure. It's a man-to-man pressure. Just to show it to him, I suppose, right, Mike? Well, PJ likes to show a little diversity. John Prelo forces a jumper, trying to draw the foul, can't get it, but gets his own rebound. Extra hustle for Prelo, and this time draws the foul. Made up for him, and a very bad shot that first time. He has a tendency sometimes to look to score a little bit too much. A couple more substitutions. Darrell Christian for Seton Hall, Jake for San for Fordham. Now, he had a decent move on Deher, but then he forced it. That's not a good shot. The hair lost his man, and there's Prelu for the rebound. He got up there among the Sequoias and gets two free throws. 
Out of Teaneck. Pulo, the first two seasons with the Rams, was the point guard. So making the transition to the, to the shooting guard. Only guy who's really scored consistently in both games. Had a decent game against Notre Dame, scoring 18 or 17 or 18. And played pretty well against Navy on Saturday afternoon here. 6'2 junior. Offensively can do it both from the outside and inside. Good start early from both teams. Some good shooting and some solid defense. 6'15 to play in the first half at the Rose Hill Gym. It's Fordham 11 and Seton Hall 11. Yeah, you could say my future here looks great. They like my work. I got a promotion. I've got great benefits and profit sharing, but let's face it, jobs don't come with a lifetime guarantee anymore. Today, you've got to cover your own future. And I have. Life insurance for living from Northwestern Mutual Life, ranked first in dividend performance more times than any other company over the last 50 years. The Quiet Company. Fresh is quite like the real cola taste of Diet Coke. With 100% NutraSweet. Hey, where's Boomer? Diet Coke! Guys! Guys! We're tied at 11, early first half. Good shooting from both clubs. Got some stats from our statistician, Al Sass. And there you go there, Michael. 60% for Seton Hall, 3 out of 5. And uh, 5 out of 7 for Fordham, 71%. That's a good sign for them. That's unusual, again, as we said at the top, it's rare that you shoot high percentage against these two teams because the man-to-man -man pressure can be so intense. And maybe De Harris ankle is bothering him because he's an early substitution tonight. Took the one-shot hit, but he's not back in there again. Darryl Christo, you see number 13 just in. Sophomore guard. Ball goes out of bounds, but Fordham knocked it out. You'll see a three-guard rotation. Here comes De Harris right back, so I guess he's okay. Get a lot of injuries for the Seton Hall Club. Perry DeHair with the sprained ankle suffered against the Iona Gales as Ali Taylor takes a seat. Nice play by Lopez there, Michael. Excellent defense from the Rams. For Sam, leads the break. Jenkins handles it, but then loses it. Prelu, three-pointer. Bang! That's his spot. He's their best offensive scorer. Rams with a three-point lead. A little full-court pressure from Fordham now. They're going to double up the sophomore Crest here there, Mike. Almost get a turnover out of it. And right into another double team. Karnishev is there to help out. That's Very the player from Lithuania. Very quiet so far. Rams appear back to be in a bit of a zone right now. 2-1-2. Two, two. Two. First time we've seen it so far today. He likes to switch it up sometimes on the first pass inside. They switch back to the man. Complex defensive schemes as the hair drives baseline. And they call it off Lopez's leg. That's a tough call because he forced the issue of baseline and nowhere to go. That could have been an offensive foul call right there, uh, Michael, under here. See all the inbound underneath their own hoop. Good defense, five second count, turnover. Well, you don't really see that often. Most teams call timeouts, players, in those sort of situations. Right, here's a depressing Pirates here. DJ knows that Herzog had himself deep. They really deny the ball well, both these teams. Contest every pass, contest every dribble. Trying to get the ball into Lopez. Avent doing a good job on him inside. Herzog gets it down low, blocked by Winchester. He's their guy, though. They need, they need points out of him, Mike. That was a good block by, by Winchester. They need points out of Herzog, however. Take Gordon a look. Winchester, the 6'7 junior out of Mount St. Michael in the Bronx. Nice block by Winchester. On the inbounds, Winchester commits the foul. It's Jay Fasan. P.J. has got a very deep club. So he can afford some fouls, and he's going to play a lot of people tonight, Mike. Yeah, he'll go 10 deep, as he did against Iona in the opener. See, he likes to go 8-9 deep, but they may have problems doing that tonight. Again, problems with their front court people. Only we don't really have a real good guy off the bench up front. 
Herzog again posts down low. Pretty turnaround, can't get it to go, and Winchester showing some aggressiveness on the boards. It's a good shot. And Nick McCarchick had to be happy with that. Herzog just missed a little bunny. Thrown away by De Gea. Avent just couldn't get control. Have to credit Lopez again with that defense. Playing very well. Jenkins with the jumper. And a foul against Anthony Avent. A little over-aggressiveness boxing out Lopez. Interesting, Lopez has been tentative in the first two games early. Tonight he does not play for his three, four minutes, and you hit the point on the head. Good defense, slapping that ball around, and now he gets the foul on Avent. So maybe Lopez learned something. Second Sit foul down. on Avent, fourth team foul against Seton Hall. This is something that P.J. Colissimo really has to guard against. You know, he just cannot have Avent getting into foul trouble. So Jerry Walker comes in. He's the only four-year starter in St. Anthony's history. How about that for Bobby Hurley Sr.? That's not bad. And Anthony's in Jersey City, and that one last touch by Lopez. So Seton Hall gets the ball back. Nick McCarchick not happy with his inbounds pass for his club. 14-11. Seton, Seton Hall needs a hoop here. A little sloppy last couple of minutes. Carnesius. Oh, travel. Blocked. Jenkins with the block. Looked like he did walk, but he's got those long, long legs, long pivot foot. 19 years of age. The foreign contingent on Seton Hall. They got a lot of them, I'll tell you. Walker, fouled by Fasan on the floor before the shot. So they'll take it out underneath only the 13th foul against the Rams. Double down in that spot. Fasan's foul. Seton Hall will play four guards. You'll see Dewey Stinson sometime a little bit later on tonight. First foul from Fasan. Again, Krista inbound. Only one shot, Mike so far today here. Carried the hair. Only the fifth freshman in Big East history to lead his team in scoring last season with the Pirates. Carnation, who likes to shoot from three point range. 2 3 zone again for Florida. We've seen both man and zone here early on for seven minutes. Nice ball move with Crest. Three pointer. Jenkins with a strong rebound, but Carnation takes it away. Oh, that's a good move. Our Jenkins first put, was, really gets on the board for the first time. Well, I tell you, Jenkins can get up, can he? Put the ball on the floor that time, Mike. That's what happens. Get it to a guard right away. Rams by one. Just under 13 and a half to play first half. The hair doing a nice job on Prelu, who's also been unable to get on track offensively. And you can see Prelu looking to shoot that basketball. Just look at his eyes. He wants to shoot it. Goes on the lob to Lopez. Damon Lopez. Excellent job that time by Fordham. Taking advantage with Avent on the bench. First time down the court. Right down to Lopez. Gets the dunk. Four, four points for Lopez. And a foul against Prelo. But Damon Lopez, who did not start the game, is making his presence known. Excellent, an excellent pass, entry pass by Herzog. Karnischewicz came out a little help to, a little late to help out, and Walker just watched the dunk. Little sloppy so far, Mike, with the guards out of Seton Hall, and Taylor and Chris holding that ball up top. They've, they've had some turnovers here. Fourth foul against the Rams. Didn't expect that, you know? First against Prelo. Well, again, the changing defenses might do it. It'll be Fordham's ball, another turnover. Wow, that's a, how many is that? Well, they really extend well the guards on that zone defense. You start changing man to man as the fifth turnover for Seton Hall. Carlissimo not happy with that. They're working too far down that right hand corner. There's nowhere to go in that right hand corner, Mike. Look for Quinn. Quinn Buck, Buck, Dave Buckner's in there, Michael. He's out of Houston. He's a second year man, had his career high of 10 against Navy. He has the ball right now. Excellent outside shooter. He is. He was a lot of playing time last year as a freshman, but a little more confidence this season. Out of Houston, Texas. Jenkins drives to the hole. Battle for the board. Buckner pulls it down. Herzog, three-pointer. Jerry Walker for the rebound. Have to get Herzog on track. He has to make those shots. Ali Taylor, pretty feed to Winchester. Can't get it to go. Herzog on the rebound. Rams down the other way. One on three. Herzog close to traveling that time. Fordham looking, trying to get it inside again. Karnishevis bats it away. Fordham holds on to possession. Excellent, excellent weak side help that time by Karnishevis. That's twice, Michael, he has helped out on the inbound, on the entry pass into Lopez. Mike Rice set to check back in the game. His team up by three. Fordham leading Seton Hall 16-13 with 11.47 to play in the first half. To the 
good life. To live the good life, you have to pay the price. The average new car costs over $15,000. But there's a motor oil that can protect your investment under extreme conditions when conventional oils won't. Mobile One, isn't your car worth the extra protection? To the good life. Protect the environment. Take your used motor oil to an approved used oil collection center. There are times when you think of family. Long gone. How you're 40 or 45 or older and time has passed by and you've got this empty feeling of how terrible it is. How little you really know about your own family because you never got around to asking. What a loss if you never knew how they got here who they traveled with, or left behind, or what they had in their pockets, where they were going. Could they have done it all when they were just six or seven? Family History Center at Ellis Island will be your second chance. Your support will help us computerize records of 17 million immigrants, help you discover your past. Family History Center can be just a dream, or it can be a place to learn more about your past than you ever dreamed of. It's up to you. You can let your past slip away, or you can grab this incredible gift. Support the center. Make it. Nick McCartrick in his fourth year at Fordham University with a record of 53 and 44. And athletic director Frank McLaughlin announcing today they're rewarding this man. New multi-year contract to stay head coach of the Rams. On the inbounds, thrown away. Battle for Hill ball. Fordham gets it out of possession. Guarantee there's a clause in there. No Don Imus on the bench. <laughs> Bit of last year, they got crushed second half against LaSalle, right? Right here. LaSalle game, John. Donald Imus came on Sports Channel, and the Rams went down the tubes. In a hurry. <laughs> Here's Lopez again. Another pass inside. Can't get a double team. Good weak side help by DeHair that time, Michael. Knocked away, Seton Hall will hold on. Again, they are awfully sloppy. I mean, this is not Bobby Knight's defense. Freshman Brian Tabers checking into the game for Ali Taylor. Carlissimo loves the freshman from Trenton. This guy's a good ball player. Look at that one back, high school. They remind him a lot of John Morton, of course, who played for four years. Playing the final four team in the championship game now with the Cleveland Cavs. De Hare slicing move, passes it. Kaver with the jumper. Interesting idea that time. A freshman, first real game of his life. Get him a shot first time he walks in there. That was a yeah, and a good pass by De Hare that time. Well, we've seen Lopez come off the bench and without even touching the ball, fire went up. Kaver just comes off and fires it up. They're not shy these days. Mm -mm. Rams still by three, 16-13. The shooting percentages have uh, somewhat gone down a little bit. Cooled off. Again inside to Lopez. Jerry Walker all over him. Good defense. Carnesian was tips it away. Third time now, Michael, that he has helped out on the weak side. He has done an excellent job defensively. He's played a lot of world games. He's been around a long time. Only 19, but he's got four years of eligibility. He'll be better about 40. Banged away again. Good defense on the inside from Seton Hall. Caver loses it to Jenkins and throws it away. Both teams getting sloppy. I am really amazed at how much problems Seton Hall has had handling the ball up top against what is essentially so far a 2-3 zone. Chris Davis, another freshman who's checked into the game for the Pirates. That's it with the ball. And right away again. Second time ball. in a row. Boy, P.J. losing his hair. He too. Let's get a little sweat first before you start firing him away. I would think. Three-point lead for the Rams. Ten and a half to play first half. Interesting that Prelude is still on the bench there, Mike. They still got Buckley. That's a bad pass by Rice. Both teams turning the ball over. Caver. Nice pass inside. Walker can't get it to go when Davis is fouled. The problem there is that Damon Lopez did not get back on defense. He had a bad pass turned to him. He looked around for five seconds, and both his men missed shot from Walker, but then the rebound, and Lopez did not hustle on defense. And Seton Hall will look to break. Mass substitutions. Anthony Avent comes back in with his two fouls. Now, where is no, no, Look, he can't even. Where's no Lopez? There's the one miss. Where's Lopez? Not even near the play. 
Got to bounce back. Can't, can't get upset if you don't get the ball or gets thrown away. First time we've seen Stinson. He's a transfer out of Holy Cross. He's 21 for Fordham. And uh, Paley back, back in there, too. So Davis goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Well, this team's got a lot of talent. You know that? You think about it. I mean, they got their hair's only a sophomore. You're throwing Caver and Davis. Luther right next year. Seton Hall. They're going to be reckoned with. Of course, Leahy, John Leahy, who might have started him. this year, but uh, might be gone for the season. They have to make a decision on that. Caver feeds off to Jerry Walker, and they bring it out again. The hair three-pointer. That should get him on track. He's only taken two shots. The hair with five points. One point lead for Seton Hall. Little six-point run. Rice trying to find Lopez again. Almost looking for him too much with Avon out of the ball game. You get that feeling, Mike? Well, they were successful early on getting it, and obviously Seton Hall adjusted. Herzog the jumper. Four points for Fred Herzog, one point lead for the Rams. Well, he's 6'8. Now, he is not 6'3. He can shoot three pointers in his 6'8. Excellent range for a big man. Rams back in the man to man defense. Now they get to 2 3. See, now they settle back in. A little full court pressure, or at least half court. Nick's a tricky guy. He is. <laughs> Trying to show Kane for the freshman point guards and things. Avon can't get the roll. Lopez falls down but gets the outlet. And Rice sees that the numbers aren't good for Fordham, but Prelude does it. Three-pointer. That's not a great shot off the first option, but you got to let him shoot it because they have to get some offense out shooting from him and hers out. Bottom line, Rams now with a four-point lead. Prelo with seven points. Interesting substitution by P.J. getting Avan back in there with two fouls. Might do it, but nine minutes to win his first half. The hair three-pointer. That was a long way. Herzog battles on the boards. Seton Hall retains possession as Herzog last touched it. Seton Hall looks very out of rhythm offensively, don't they? They have not gotten into a rhythm. And again, it's the constant changing of the defenses from the zone and the man. Gordon Winchester back in. Marco Lokar makes his first appearance for Seton Hall. For the Rams, Jay Fasan also back in. Blocked by Lopez, but even right there to tip it in. Has that height advantage? That should not be happening on inbounds players getting layups. The Lopez almost overcame the mistake. Let's see if uh, Fordham here sets up a play for Lopez if they get Avan his third foul. Sometimes you do this, you, get, you mess up your offense when you try to get a guy in foul trouble, but this may not be a bad option right here. Good defense from Brian Cable. Jenkins pulls up. In and out. Oh, it was halfway down. Caver ahead to Marco Lokar. Third guy out off the bench shooting jumpers. Not getting a sweat. This team is that shy. It's like Green out there shooting. <laughs> or me. Two point lead for Fordham at the eight minute mark. Again, a missed layup. Avent just can't get it to fall. Fordham, uh, I've seen getting good shots the last three or four times. They're missing a lot of little buddies, aren't they? Look for Prelude to take Lokar. Three-pointer. John Prelude on fire. Ten points. He's three for three from three-point range and a five-point lead for the Rams. He is so important, Michael, off with this offense because he can get him baskets or broken down plays. Just go one-on-one. -on -one. Back in the zone for the Rams. Yeah, he traveled. Crowd run and a walk. Caver, wild shot. Battle for the boards. Jerry Walker will call it on the ground. No basket. Nick McCarchuk not happy with his team's boxing out. He's not yelling at the officials. He's yelling at Sanford Jenkins. Second shot opportunities here, Michael, for, for uh, Seton Hall. Walker, Jenkins off the body. They cannot lose Jenkins. He's their one athlete, really up front and forward. 16 foul on the Rams, so they won't shoot it yet. Seton Hall will have possession. They're down by five with 7-16 to play in the first half here at the Rose Hill Gym in the Bronx. that 
85% of U.S. Air's fleet is in the air by 8 a.m. every business day. is quite like the real cola taste of Diet Coke. Just one reason, just for the taste of me. With 100% Nutrisweet. Hey, where's Boomer? Diet Coke. Guys, guys. Another honor for that man, P.J. Carlissimo. Today named the coach of the U.S. team for the World University Games next summer, which will be played in Sheffield, England. And again, going for his 200th career victory tonight. Not bad for a guy who had a lot, a lot of folks wanted him out of there three years ago at Seton Hall, and they persevered, and now he is. Done some nice job rebuilding programs at New Hampshire, Wagner, and now with the Pirates. Five-point lead for the Rams. Seven minutes to go, first half. Avent posts himself down low. But, oh, nice play by Lopez. Lopez has been all over the place, Michael, on a defensive front, except for that one time we didn't hustle back on defense. Lopez has been a terror on our defensive glass tonight. Well, good team defense that time because he fell down on the inbound pass, but he was surrounded by white jerseys. They were really sagging in on Anthony Avent. Winchester, two-pointer. Four points for Gordon Winchester. Three-point lead for Fordham. Prelu on their freshman. I wouldn't be surprised if they were one-on-one. -on -one. The sand drives the Herzog right there. Bad pass, huh? Looked Over like, his head. Looked like he had nowhere to go, but he knew where Herzog was all the time. Little magic and worthy right there. They break the press. Jerry Walker inside to Winchester. Can't handle it. That's an excellent play though by Walker there. Michael goes right down the paint. Winchester cuts on that left sideline, right to the hole. He catches it, it's a dunk. That's a good play by Fordham and a good play by Walker. Great and something offensively. Terry DeHair and Arturis Karnishev is back in the game. Seventh turnover for Seton Hall. Fordham with six, so again, the pressure defense forcing turnovers. Almost to five seconds. Avent with the steal. Prelo almost takes it right back off Jerry Walker's hands and Fordham gets control. Got the balls off the Seton Hall hands all night. Slapping it off their hands, it's been Fordham basketball. This can be an intimidating place to play for a young player. Very loud, loud, you know, echo, crowd pretty much right on top of you. That has not really been, hasn't really burst out with explosions tonight. Another nice pass. Herzog finishes it off again. Jay Fasan, a beautiful pass. Herzog has eight points. Off, off penetration, you get layups off penetration. Another situation, although Kevin got hit in the face, but another spot where the guards got doubled up and have problems bringing the ball up the court. See what Mickey Crowley called that time, did not call a foul. It appeared Kevin had hurt his eye and couldn't see, great. and Crowley kind of halted play for a second. What great penetration that time, Michael, by fans, fans to, uh, what's his name? The Sands, the Sands to Herzog, who uh, gets the little layup. His hands. Come on, Russo, work on the pronunciation. <laughs> Mike Bloom continues. Type of game you get excited for, though. <laughs> you got largest lead for Fordham right now, 28-21. Ali Taylor. Look at that defense come out. They're really extending themselves. Boy, the guards are. That 2-3 zone. Okay. Terry DeHair, three-pointer. Even can't control it. There's a 2-1, two two Michael. Fasan and Stinson. Dewey Stinson. Can't get it. Karnishevet leads the break to Taylor. Pretty pull up from Ollie Taylor. Absolutely. He's almost a two guy in a point man's body. You, point man's body. You know he loves to score. Five points for Taylor. Did it his whole career except for last year when he was the point guard. Still having a ten of all game. Intense game. Lopez, the fake. And Avent with the fouls. Can't go for the block. That time I took advantage of that. He's got two fouls, Avent, and they can't afford to lose him. Certainly, P.J. Carlissimo doesn't want that third foul before halftime. Avent gets fouled by Herzog. 
Sing Ho is starting to do a little better job, Michael, of finding the cracks in the transition on that 2-3 zone. They dish the ball off to the sideline, and either the sideline guy goes right to the basket, or somebody cuts right down the lane. Two or three times we've seen that with Winchester along that left sideline, and it's worked out for Seton Hall in this last couple of minutes. Herzog with his first foul. Now, watch Winchester. Look at that great pass. I mean, that shit was a good foul by Herzog. I mean, that's, that's a dunk. He doesn't foul him there. Avid, four for four from the free throw line tonight, six points overall. 4.44 to play in the first half, seven point lead for Fordham. They did not shoot well at all, Seton Hall, from the line in their first game against Iona. If you look for a, a little fly in the ointment, that was it. I think they were 16 for 29 or something along those lines. They did not shoot well from the free throw line. Seventeen for twenty-six. You miss a lot of one-on-ones, it turns into a lot more. Jerry Walker back in the game, and Avent will sit down. I think PJ Carlissimo would like to keep him down for the final 444, so he doesn't pick up that third person. Absolutely, he's got to be very happy. He got some good five minutes out of him, and got some free throws, and get him out of there. Thirty-six percent shooting up so far here, Michael, in his first half for Seton Hall. Prelu, three-pointer, not a good shot. And Taylor gets the rebound. Pounded by Prelo. Nice move from Taylor. It doesn't fall, though. Out of bounds. Seton Hall's ball. We saw two things that time. We saw Prelo force an offensive shot that led to a fast break. And we saw a guy ahead of the field, but Taylor did not throw it to him and instead went right to the lane and missed the layup that time. Darryl Chris back in. Taylor sits down. Now, look at PJ talking to him. You can see he's checked off. Does Oliver's got to give it up that time on that break. Does not expect that from his senior. It's his point guard. He's the guy of everyone you want to make those sound decisions on the break. De Hare, three-pointer. Prelo on the long rebound. Well, they lead, I tell you, threes lead to those, don't they, Michael? Another pull-up. Prelo battling for his own offensive boards, but he's rushing his shots and forcing no a little bit. No doubt. Pointing to himself, too. There's a fine line there between looking to create your own shots and forcing it, and he's past that line and he's starting to force it. Looks a little tired. I think he was pointing to Nick McCarchick to let him know, let me out. Karnishevis. Should have shot that. A little hesitant to shoot a couple of times tonight now. First time he's ever been in the Bronx. Long <laughs> way from Lithuania. Here we go. Here's Karnishevis. Jerry Walker on the offensive glass. The battle for the boards. Walker again. Very hard, Michael, to rebound sometimes and find a man to box out when you're playing a 2-3 zone. And we have seen that be an example here tonight so far off the offensive glass for Seton Hall. First two points for Walker. Lead is cut to four for Fordham. Stolen away from Winchester again. The lob pass and they're double teaming Lopez down low. They're lazy lob passes. That's the problem. Karnishevis three-pointer. <laughs> Side goes to Dewey Stinson, almost thrown away, but Fordham holds on. Buckner will come in for Prelu. And PJ Carlissimo not happy with the sloppy play from his team, although they're only now down by four. Fordham leads it 30 to 26. Three minutes in, two seconds to go. College basketball on Sports Channel. This quality Craftmatic Model 2 adjustable bed costs. 50% less than this quality nationally advertised brand name flatbed. 50% less. That's right. For 50% less, you can enjoy the comfort, luxury, and convenience an adjustable bed brings to your bedroom. Read in bed, watch TV in bed, relax and elevate your head, back, and feet. Plus, get the best night's sleep of your life and do it for 50% less than the cost of this quality flatbed. Call toll-free now to get the facts free by mail about Craftmatic's Model 2 bed that adjusts electrically at the touch of a button, supports your entire body effortlessly in any position, yet costs 50% less than this flat bed. Don't buy any bed until you get our free catalog by mail. Call for it now. There's absolutely no obligation. Call 1-800-233-9950. That's 1-800-233-9950 toll-free. Call 1-800-233-9950. It's Fordham Mike Green about five years ago. <laughs> the Fordham Ram. You can lose a lot of weight in that costume. Coming up this Saturday, Sports Channel brings you the semifinals of the NCAA Division III football playoffs. The Hofstra Flying Dutchman 
host the Lycoming Warriors. College football playoffs. Hofstra going for a national championship against Lycoming Saturday afternoon, 12.30, live and exclusive right here on Sports Channel. 28% shooting Mike first half for Seton Hall, 9 out of 32. That won't get it done against any ball club. And they started shooting extremely well, so they're struggling now. But they made three out of their first five, didn't they? Kevin McBride back in the game, so McBride and Lopez, both big guys in there as Rice is called for traveling. Rice early on in the game strained his lower back, and it's bothering him a little bit. He sat down for a little bit. He has a tendency sometimes to have those careless turnovers, and that was a careless one right there. Man to man now for Florida. Nick McCarthy continues to change up the defenses. With Herzog on De Gea, what a matchup that is. Strong move from De Gea, not strong enough on the shot though. Nice pass inside Winchester, couple of fakes. Herzog cannot stick with De Gea, Mike. That, that has to be changed. You cannot have Freddie Herzog, 6'8", guarding the lightning quickness of Terry De Gea. Herzog does have good quickness for a big guy, but De Gea is just an extremely tough matchup for him. Two-point lead now for the Rams. They led by as many as seven. It's the biggest team they can put out there for them with uh, McBride and Lopez in there. Herzog squares himself nicely. He shot the ball well so far tonight. He's got ten points. Obviously, Nick was a little concerned about the defensive rebounds because we have seen McBride, Herzog, and Lopez up front in a man-to-man. -man. That's an interesting situation for Nick. 150 to play, first half. Now they fall back into a 2-3. But he saw the out-rebounding situation. Three-pointer from Daryl Crest is long. Yeah, Good boxing a, out from Lopez. That was a rainbow right there from Chris. That's 11 three-pointers Seton Hall has attempted here in this first half. Yeah, the defense intensity tough. Mike Rice again. That was not a good shot, Michael. Daryl Crist leading the break. Fordham gets back in a hurry this time. Very sloppy offensive game. A lot of bad shots. Bad shot selection on both teams. They get frustrated defensively because they put so much pressure. Jerry Walker is fouled. Ooh, that could have been a travel. Well, he got bumped beforehand, though. It's the eighth team foul. They'll shoot one and one. Obviously not the tenth team foul, so Jerry Walker will go and shoot one and one. Nick did not like that call, either. So we've seen a couple of things. We have seen Nick get very concerned, McCarchick, of the defensive rebound. So he went to his biggest ball club. Now he's got Fasans back in there. He went to his biggest ball club up front with McBride, Lopez, and Herzog. And he is still going wild about that last foul call. He cannot understand the bump. That is one emotional uh, coach. Lopez. One heck of a nice guy. You talk to, to most college coaches and those involved in the college game around the country, they'll say Nick McCarchick is one of the hardest working coaches around. You know, Coach Mike Smerick at Canisius, who played, had a little cup of coffee with the Lakers, so. Jerry Walker on the one and one on his first trip to the free throw line. He now has three points, and Nick's not giving up. <laughs> He's going to lose that battle. Multi-year contract today. Walker hits both. Lead is cut to two once again, and more full court pressure from the Pirates. They have had problems inbounding the basketball. That's the third or fourth time, Mike, that Herzog's taken a long time to get that ball inbounds. Seton Hall does an excellent job denying the ball. Fordham's going to have to start setting some screens to a little back door. Something. The sand and Crist will go at it. Very important that Fordham leads the half, uh, uh, goes into the locker room with a lead at the half. Very psychologically important for Fordham to have a lead at uh, the half here against Seton Hall. For Sam, will pull up on a block outside. Not to call an offensive foul. On Herzog. So Freddie Herzog picks it up with, moved a little bit on the screen. You agree with that? You think it's important for uh, Fordham here to leave? Because they've played well defensively, they, they, they need a little momentum going in. They were up by as many as seven points. They see Herzog moving. Excellent call. He definitely picked off Crest and that's a one-on-one -on -one situation, so... Ninth team foul, of course, the next one would, would be two shots. We're talking about that at halftime with uh, both P.J. and McCarchick. That new rule. Boy, McCarchick is still strong. Whew. Darryl Chris with the one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Fasan with a rebound. And a foul against Gordon Winchester. But Seton Hall over the limit, so Fassan's will take a walk. Fassan 
stands maybe six foot amongst some pretty big fellas in there and grabs that board. I guess that wasn't a 17 foul, only the sixth, so he will not shoot the free throws. 59 seconds to play. Thrown away, the hair, nice fake. And a traveling violation. But I am amazed at how difficult it has been for Ford and Mike to inbounds the basketball. It's unbelievable. Again a problem. And another turnover. Winchester finds the hair. 51 seconds to play. First half. Seton Hall's down by two. PJ should get a shot off. He could, uh, well, he can't get the two shot for one here in this possession. So he's gonna play for his first best, his best shot opportunity. It's about eight seconds differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So Seton Hall will have to shoot before the end of the first half. De Hair pulls up, can't get the banker. Walker knocks it out of bounds. You know, Nick, Nick will play for one because he wants to go to the half with a lead. He's up two, they'll play for one in this spot. Obviously, he's got to get the ball in bounds here first. Chris Davis checks back in for Gordon Winchester. De Hair has only shot two of seven from the floor. He has had problems against this Fordham defense. That time they worked it correctly. They clear it out for Prelude to go one-on-one -on -one against Oliver Taylor. Shot clock is off. 21 seconds remaining in the first half. Fordham with a two-point lead. Excellent defensive battle here in the Bronx. Interesting to see what uh, Fordham can come up with. I would not mind Fazans to penetrate and dish off to somebody. Starting a little late, loses control, finds McBride. It works. Well, there's no way that Nick McCarchick diagrammed it that way, but the end result is a four-point lead for the Rams. That's a big, big basket as McCarchick walks off the court. P.J. ticked off. Now, that last situation, screaming and yelling. He thought Fassan should have been called for a traveling violation. The official saying that when Fassan fell down, if you fall down but are not dribbling, it's a traveling violation. But if you're dribbling while you fall down, it's okay. All right, he's a guy who's probably done it a couple of times himself. And Kevin McBride winds up with the final points of the first half. Now, uh, here's a good defense by De Hair. There's the trip. See, now, he did look like he did dribble it. And now, as long as he doesn't get up, it's not a traveling you know, violation. That's a very bad play by Davis that time. He cannot let McBride go right to the hall and try to double team. He a big man. You stay down. Uh, he took an extra step, I think, huh? See, I don't, I don't think like he, he slid. I think it's a good no call because he... He seemed like he, at least he attempted the dribble as he was falling oh, look, down. Look at your top of your right hand screen, 31 Davis. Well, what do you see at the foul line? Looks back, McBride for a layup. Time for halftime activities coming up during halftime. Christopher Russo speaks with P.J. Colissimo and Nick McCartrick. It's the Rams on top after the first 20 minutes of play. A four-point lead, 34 to 30. Considering all the people we serve, all the places we go, and all the times we go there, it would take a lot of airlines to be U.S. Air. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. Do you need a car? Listen, each year government agencies auction, sell, and liquidate thousands of cars and trucks, and the bidding starts as low as $30. Government vehicles, luxury cars taken from drug dealers, criminals, and thousands more seized, repossessed, sold through bankruptcy proceedings. Now find out how you can grab the car you want at government liquidation and bankruptcy prices. Bid as low as $30 for Porsches, Mercedes, Ferraris, Corvettes, family cars, and trucks. Find out how to get the car you want now. Call 1-900-HOT-AUTO. That's 1-900-468-2886. Just $2 a minute. Hello? Hi, honey. I just checked in. How was the flight? Uh, bad food, good movie. I miss you. I miss you, too. I feel so alone when you're not here. Did you, uh, lock all the doors and turn on the ADT system? Yep. The last thing a burglar wants to see. ADT helps protect your home and family 24 hours a day, every day of the year, by linking your home to an ADT customer service center. Call 1-800-ADT-INFO. For a small monthly fee and one-time installation charge, our SafeWatch system can help protect your home against break-ins, fire, and medical emergencies. Help protect your home. Help protect your peace of mind. Call 1-800-ADT-INFO. I'll see you at home tomorrow night, then. I love you both. We love you, too. We'll be here. ADT, we're home even when you're not. ADT.
ET Safe Watch. Call this number now. Only $395 installation and $19.95 monthly monitoring fee. ADT. We're home even when you're not. Your post office delivery truck is also a pickup truck because Express Mail has pickup service. Call us and we'll pick up as many packages as you have, all for one low price of $4. Your guaranteed next morning delivery with Express Mail service at the lowest cost anywhere, just $8.75. So call 1-800-333-8777 and we'll be over to pick up your overnight packages for you. We are postal service. We deliver for you. A noisy Rose Hill gym in the Bronx. Mike Breen and Christopher Russo, college basketball on Sports Channel. Fordham leading Seton Hall 34-30. We're at halftime. And earlier before tonight's game, Mr. Russo had a chance to chat with tonight's coaches. Thank you there, Mike. And back at the half with the head coaches of these ball clubs, Nick McClarchick, of course, of Fordham, and P.J. Carlissimo. Got it right. <laughs> head coach of uh, Seton Hall. This is what New York City basketball is all about. You know, you guys play Iona, P.J. You, you got Iona on Saturday. Good to see you. Almost a little five stuff with this, with all the intensity the last couple nights. P.J., first to you. What do you think about that? Uh, it's a great game. It's a difficult game. You don't like playing against friends, and, and this game has always been a difficult game, but there's no question it's good. I mean, St. John's, Fordham, St. Peter's, Iona, we play the local people. Uh, that's the tradition here. Here. That's the one negative with all the leagues. With the, the one thing that's been broken down, I guess, with the new leagues is a lot of the local rivalries. But, you know, I mean, I know Fort of my own is a great rivalry. I think our rivalry has stayed good. Certainly uh, St. Peter's and Rutgers with us over in Jersey. Uh, that's what local basketball, Met basketball, has always been about. And a feather in your cap, you guys can knock off some of these big East clubs. You've had some success. Beat them last year. So you beat, beat Seton Hall. It's a feather in Nick McCartrick's cap tonight. We're very grateful that Seton Hall and St. John's continue to play us. And I, and I mean that sincerely. Not just because every, every time P.J. comes here, we we give him something. I mean, <laughs> we give him a game, we give him plaques, but... This is his gym. No, they don't, they don't, they don't give us a win, though. <laughs> but, you know, we thank them because they've moved up, certainly, over the last five or six years, and now they could say, well, forget about tradition, forget about the people that we used to play. We really are grateful to Seton Hall and to St. John's as well that they keep us on their schedule because it's a great game for us, a great game for our kids. Right, let's talk about some rule changes. P.J., first few, this is Bush on his first college game of the year. The 10 fouls at the end of the half with the two free throws instead of the one-on-one. -on -one. You don't like that at all, right? I, I don't care for it. To me, it's going to lengthen the games. You know, I, I think Nick and I are the same. It's interesting, though. Bobby Wenzel today at the Jersey Luncheon said he thought it was good. The intent is supposedly to shorten games. Why anybody wants to do that, I don't know, except you people. But you're not going to sit here. If, if, if I'm behind at the end of the game, I still got to follow. I don't think it makes a difference and you certainly don't need it in the first half so I don't care for it maybe we should play with it a couple games before we shoot our mouths off but I think it's a bad rule you agree Nick oh wholeheartedly it just slows the game up it it's another thing that just makes the game longer we're looking to make them shorter uh, how about the three shots for the guy who's shooting a three-point when it gets fouled you like that rule I like that rule I, I didn't like the three-point shot when it came in but now that we have three-point shots it's a very important part of the game uh, I know for an example that Dayton is going to try to shoot a thousand threes this year. Wow. So, I mean, if it's going to be that many shots taken from that area, you got to give three fouls if it's a shot attempt. PJ, today, UNLV is allowed to play in the 91 NCAA tournament. Tarkin coach. Next year, they get the probation in no tournament. Your thoughts on that? You, you can't come up with a solution. Solomon couldn't solve that one because where the problem was, those kids aren't there anymore. You hate to see kids punished, but at the same time, when there's violations, you know, there has to be punishment. So, I, you know, I feel badly for the Vegas team, but by the same token, it was Vegas Vegas that did it, so they got to pay the penalty. And Arizona's a very good ball club. Now there's person, every, obviously Vegas number one now, uh, makes out west with Vegas, Arizona, two good clubs out there. The well, it's going to create some competition, that's for sure. Those are two outstanding basketball teams, and us in the metropolitan area had a chance to watch Arizona play at Madison Square Garden. They're a great basketball team. 20th year anniversary for you guys with that great team with Digger. You run that ball club. Always fun to come back to this gym, right, PJ? It's fun to come back. This is exactly what I did. I, had <laughs> I, I sat right here and watched the games. But, yes, it is fun, and we're looking forward to uh, Nick and everybody at Fordham has been great, and uh, most of our teammates are going to be back, and I think it's in February at you, the Garden. So we have that forward. picture of, of that team downstairs <laughs> in our locker room. Before the game, I'm going to bring P.J. down. <laughs> Show it to him just one more time. But get, the, get the old Fairfield days from the 62 <laughs> thing. But, uh, guys, good luck. Have a good year. Big E, it should be a tough conference, right? It's going to be a good year. And Nick, Patriot League, get the play tough, of Northeast. Yeah. Got some good teams in the league this year. Good luck, second half. Thank you. Both those coaches in a battle tonight. Here in the Bronx, Fordham leading at a halftime, 34 to 30. We'll have highlights and halftime stats coming up after this on Sports Channel. What's wrong?
wrong with this picture? That was before. There's obviously nothing wrong with this picture now, thanks to international hair design. All I know is I used to be pretty bald. And now I've got a great head of hair. There's really nothing I can't do with this system. Call International Hair Design now at 1-800-535-1230 for a free informational video and brochure. Only International Hair Design's revolutionary inter-strand system guarantees you natural hair that's easy to maintain and feels as good as it looks. Our president, Stella Nesti, renowned in the industry for over 17 years, developed the inter-strand system for our clients alone. Call International Hair Design now for a free consultation and we'll send a chauffeur-driven limousine to your Manhattan home or office to whisk you away to our plush facilities. Call 1-800-535-1230 now. that U.S. Air's fleet is in the air by 8 a.m. every business day. The business of New York Okay, okay, I'll take 10,000 a market. Is it true, Mr. Ryan, that you intend to run for office? You must connect yourself. The stories in the system. Can help you find the way. Natural page one. Ready for phase two. We know the things you need to know. We're all connected. Helping New York build and grow. New York Telephone connects New York business with custom-designed digital voice and data networks, unique cost-effective services, and professionals who can tailor it to your needs. Because business in New York can be great, but you've got to get connected. We're all connected. That's how the city's grown. Greg's gonna be fine. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Connected. New York. Telephone. Well, we build this one as a defensive battle between two very tough defensive teams. We've got that. Fordham leading 34 to 30 here at halftime over Seton All Mike Green and Christopher Russo, glad to be back with you. Really an excellent defensive game. No question about it there, Michael. And Seton Hall only shooting about 29% from the field, 10 out of 34. That's not good enough to win. I don't care where you play in Division One. You've got to be shooting the ball 35, 40%. If you're going to play good defense, you've got to get at least to the 40s, have a chance to win these ball games. Defensive rebounding on the backboard for Fordham, a big problem. And very sloppy for Seton Hall up top with that two threes on. A lot of turnovers where they should not have in big situations. All right, we'll show you some of the stats from the first half. And again, both these teams started off the first half shooting extremely well. Well, and then they started to struggle a little bit. Again, the defense part of the problem. For the first half, Seton Hall only 29% from the floor, while Fordham shot 54%. And also, Seton Hall's got to improve on that free throw shooting, Chris. Only 8 for 12 from the free throw line. That was a bugaboo against Iona, plus the rebounds. 18-13 for Seton Hall. Almost seems like it's worse than that because they've got a lot of offensive rebounds. Let me say that offensive rebound category. And again, 54% shooting for Fordham. That's good enough. And also turnovers. Seton Hall turned the ball over quite a bit in the opening minutes, but then finished with only eight turnovers for the half, Fordham with ten turnovers. As for some of our leading scores, uh, Anthony Avent got in some foul problems. He led Seton Hall with seven points, but he's got to get on track inside. No question. He can take advantage of Lopez, who played well. I think you will have a chance in the second half by Nick. You will see McBride and Lopez in here together. They put the last three or four minutes together, and if that's the case, that makes it awfully hard for Avent to get some maneuverability inside the lane. If both McBride the big guy and Lopez are in there in that second half. Now one thing Fordham has to do, they've got to box out a little bit better in the second half. Seton Hall started to get a lot of second shots. Some of the highlights from the first half show just that. Take a look at this. There's a three-pointer that's missed by Chris. Now here's a good rebound by Jenkins. Jenkins can get up, but he wants to put them on the floor. See, put them on the floor right there. Can't do that. And a nice layup by the, by, by the Lithuanian. I'm going to let you handle the pronunciation with the uh, off the backboard. Arturis Karnishevis who right. got his first two points of the night. And then again, Fordham at one point had a seven-point lead. That dwindled down to two. But the Rams got a little lucky in the final seconds of the first half. This, of is, this is a job of Mike. Watch this. Watch him slide on his knee. Watch him slide. He slide. He slides. That's a travel. You, you can't slide on your knee like that and get away with it. And there's McBride who got lucky on this basket. 
a defensive lapse there after the uh, <coughs> quote unquote travel, and Fordham goes in at halftime with a four point lead. And again, some of our leading scores Anthony Avent leads Seton Hall with seven. They had balanced scoring. Gordon Winchester with six, Terry DeHare and Ali Taylor both with five. For the Rams, John Prelo and Freddie Herzog both shot extremely well. Interesting, too. Prelo and Herzog both have 10 points. They got to get points out of them. They here, who seen home must get points, only two out of seven on the field and just five points. Second half set to begin here in the Bronx. Fordham and Seton Hall, the Rams lead by four. We'll be back after this. As I was saying, I don't care what anybody else... Holy moly, it's John Madden. In an exciting new video, the coach tells his own story with riotous football experiences, behind-the-scenes broadcasting, his funniest ads, and much, much more. Meet the John Madden everyone wants to know. Feel the excitement of great plays and insights into great players. You know, linebackers are a different breed anyway. Recapture the drama of Super Bowl XI. There's no one else won Super Bowl XI. We did. Get a personally guided tour of the famous Madden bus. The, uh, Learn the inside uh, story of hosting Saturday Night down. Live with his hilarious yeah. buckwheat yeah. imitation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, he they, well, he Even his appearance in the Paul Simon Me and Julio music video. You guys, you guys need some fundamentals. You know I mean? All this and more. Use your credit card and call toll-free to order John Madden, the American dream comes to life. A perfect gift for just $19.95 plus shipping. To order, call 1-800-854-1700. That's 1-800-854-1700. Yeah, you could say my future here looks great. I like my work. I got a promotion. I've got great benefits and profit sharing. But let's face it, jobs don't come with a lifetime guarantee anymore. Today, you've got to cover your own future. And I have. Life Insurance for Living from Northwestern Mutual Life, ranked first in dividend performance more times than any other company over the last 50 years. The Quiet Company. Looking for thrill-minute college hoops? Go no further. Sports Channel features coverage of the Seton Hall Pirates, battling rivals like Georgetown, Syracuse, UConn, and Pitt for the Big East crown. Powerhouses LaSalle and Iota hit the hardwood in exclusive MAC conference action. On Sports Channel America, you'll see over 50 games of the nation's best teams shooting towards the NCAA title. Sports Channel is the channel for exciting college basketball. Lively crowd here at the Rose Hill Gym. Fordham with that four-point lead, 34-30. Rams looking to make it two in a row over Seton Hall. They won last year down at the Walsh Gymnasium. And again, it was a very tough game for the Pirates because that was the day that Seton Hall learned that Ramon Ramos was involved in that near-fatal car accident. So they played under, obviously, some emotional stress. But we received good news from, from the Portland Trailblazers this week. Ramos, as you see, Louis Carnesecca in attendance tonight. Uh, is back, going to go back to Puerto Rico to his home in a couple of weeks. He's walking four or five miles per day. His speech continues to improve. In fact, they just had a, had a birthday party at the Trailblazers front office the other day for Ramos. He's attended a couple of games. Just a miraculous recovery. Long way to go, but uh, boy, our players are with him. No question about it. So Louie here tonight, getting ready for a probably Central Connecticut State again. <laughs> for the lap check. Of course, he's got the Pirates in Big East play as we're just underway in the second half. Got to get Day here going if you're P.J. Colomissimo right now. Don't you think, Mike? Karnishevich just not looking to shoot. Was wide open underneath. Ali Taylor, three-pointer. A little bit of a rattle. And right away, it's a one-point lead for Fordham. And no full-court pressure that time, which is a bit of a surprise since Fordham's had so much trouble inbounding the basketball off main hoops. Eight points for Taylor. Stolen by Karnishevich. Dehair. A little hesitation, forces the shot, Avent. Weak side rebounding, nobody helping out. Don't be surprised if you see an early timeout by Markarczyk in this second half. He's not gonna let this game get away at all. Avent with nine points. Again, he had some foul problems in the first half. If he starts to get on track, Fordham could be in trouble. Another steal from Karnishevis. Sets it back up, Winchester, and a traveling violation. Well, I tell you, I would call a timeout if I'm Mick McCarthy to set this ball club down. Rice is not in there in this second half. He's still banged up a little bit. So Fazan is going to be the guard of bringing that ball up the court. Fordham sends everybody down to help out. Here's Fasan now coming the other way. Loses it out of bounds. I'll get that name right sometime tonight. Not Fazan, it's Fazan. Come on, Russo. They'll call a foul against Gordon Winchester. Good call. Didn't think they were going to call it right away. But he bumped Fasan and the ball went out of bounds. 
third foul on Winchester. There it is again. Passan a little out of control here. He's not going anywhere along the right, uh, along the right corner. You don't penetrate there. You penetrate around right down the middle. Another Mike. bat. Mike, how many times are we going to see bad passes off inbounds plays? Three on one break. Anthony Avent. That is the difference in this game. Ben Karnishevis with all three steals. He's got those long arms. And it's 7-0 run to start the second half for Seton Hall. They need a basket desperately on this trip down the court. You know that? If they don't get one soon, you can bank on Nick McCarchick calling a timeout because this team a little rattled right now. Prelude, three-pointer. Wow. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, but no. it counts. <laughs> no way. Big three-pointer, tie game. 18 minutes to play. Event the turnaround. Dant at the roll, but gets his own rebound. Offensive rebounds. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he must rebound. Free low, three-pointer. John Prelo, five of six from three-point range. The Rams are up by three. The back went home the first time, and they do it the more conventional way. Lopez the block. There's a three-on-one, Mike. Prelo again for three points. Wow. 19 points for John Prelo. Just like they have, he is a streak shooter, only 44% last year, but that first one off the bank got him going here, Mike. He hey, traveled. You got it, Christopher. This place is getting extremely loud. Little rattled, Seton Hall. Little rattled. Seton Hall opens up the second half with a 7-0 run. Fordham now on a 9-0 run themselves, thanks to John Prelo's three-pointers. Three in a row. That was a huge last one off the break. Exciting game, Mike. And this place, again, as you mentioned earlier, slow to fill up, but they're active. Lopez can't get it to fall. Even with a strong rebound. Not a bad idea. Got to get Damon involved a little bit offensively if you're Nick McCarchick. Karnishevis with his own three. You can tell he's a good player because he followed up that on that shot, he went right to the hole, and that's a sign of a good rebounder and a good scorer, a guy who follows up, follows his three-point opportunities, and he did that time. He's got five points. A lot of people think by the time he's done, he'll be a first-team All-Big East. He's got that, that kind of talent. He just has to get adjusted to the country. Prelo again has a clap, but Lopez right there. Anthony Avent's got to wake up. Eight points for Lopez, five-point lead for Fordham. Even pretty close move. Lopez blocks him, but gets part of his arm. Cardinal rule in basketball, Mike. You know as well as anybody else is. If you're on defense, do not leave your feet. The and that time, Lopez let his feet. Prelo get a little carried away. He got fouled on that three-point by Prelo right there, but Lopez followed it up. I tell you, by the looks of it, it looked like a pretty good lob pass. You think it was a lob pass? No. He can tell your friends that the next day. Hey, he, he hit three in a row with the three. You know he was looking to shoot a fourth one. That's right. It's an assist in the book, right? 45-40. Fordham. With the lead, 16-16 to play. This would be a huge win for the Rams. Avent now 6 of 7 from the free throw line. He's got 12 points overall. Interesting. It's like a little rivalry. You know, Seton Hall plays Iona on Saturday, then this game, and then... Fordham takes on Iota tomorrow. All three teams on Saturday, like Iota games in Iota, all three teams in the three thing could go one and one, which would show you something. So some exciting basketball early on in the metropolitan area. Turnover, bad pass. Marco Lopar, who just checked back in, will bring it out and start the offense again. That was a terrible pass. Pirates down by three. Scotty Burrell of Connecticut, he isn't. <laughs> Remember that with Tate George's jumper last year? Winchester almost loses it, finds Avent. Again, he's double teamed, blocked, but they'll call a foul. Let's see if they give it to Lopez, they do. Second time that Lopez jumped in the air, Michael. Did you see that? And you do that, you give the opportunity for the offensive guy to get that step advantage on you. Only the second foul on Lopez. And watch Lopez jump. You can't jump on that. Boom, gets the step. Then it gets him out across the yard. Good call. 
and Avent doing the job from the free throw line tonight. He's been making how many free throw opportunities does he have? I should have that. I'm the stack guy around here. How many? From Newark, New Jersey. He's seven of eight so far tonight. John Prelo is going to check back in. Put the arm in ice for a couple of minutes, now he comes back on. Buckner will take a seat. Dave Buckner, a little spell for Prelo. Who seems to get a little winded in the first half, might still be a little tired. He's played hard tonight. You called that in the first half, and he has played hard. He said they, got, they need to get points out of him. That's all there is to it. Ava now 8 of 10 from the free throw line. That's what you want to shoot. About 80% is what these guys should shoot. So with 15-51 to play, Nick McCartrick and the Fordham Rams. Their lead is cut to two, 45-43 at the Rose Hill Gym in the Bronx. Yeah. A lot of airlines would like to be U.S. Air. And considering all the people we serve, all the places we go, and all the times we go there, it would take a lot of airlines to be U.S. Air. U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. Fresh is quite like the real cola taste of Diet Coke. Just one reason, just for the taste of me. With 100% NutraSweet. Hey, where's Boomer? Diet Coke. Guys, guys. 45-43. Fordham in a tough, tough place to win when you're visiting Team Seton Hall's finding that out tonight. Well, he's got that two-point lead. Well, that tells you something right there. Who does Herzog have inbounds the ball to on the inbounds play? His center, Lopez. I have, uh, it's unbelievable. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but... Just, again, it shows part of it, though. Seton Hall's guard just really denying the ball effectively. Fasan drives the hole. Just can't get it to go. Knocked around. Lokar comes up with a loose ball. Lokar cannot stay with Fasan. He should do that all the time. Winchester can't handle it. He's out of bounds. Good idea. He was just in the wrong area. Jerry Walker's going to check back in, and Winchester walk down the court as Ollie Taylor sits down. Brian Caver back in. Winchester is an excellent leaper. Watch this leap. And that was a great catch he made. Another bad pass. They are really having problems inbounding the ball. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, goodness gracious. Great job, you hit it though out of the head. Great job by Seton Hall on the, on the denial. And a foul off the ball of John Prelo. That time setting a screen a little bit too tough. Well, you're really, seeing, out, you're really seeing offensive foul call on an inbounds play, huh? Well, they've, since they've been struggling, they've got to do something. So now they're starting to set some, some screens, but that time Prelo got carried away. Second foul against Prelo. Third team foul. You know, I gotta wonder about De Gea's ankle. He has not played that much tonight. You know that, Mike? Well, he's every once in a while, PJ Carlissimo will make sure he sits him down for a couple of minutes. Got the freshman Caber now in there. The other guard. Fordham zones up on this inbounds. There he is. Nice slicing move. And now he got it into Avent with a foul against Sanford Jenkins. Uh, we are going to see if this continues, this two-shot rule with the fouls, because that's 14 fouls already on uh, Fordham in his half and the third person on Lopez. They call that on Jenkins and that's oh, his Oh, I'm sorry, start. okay. Lopez has two. And he's kind of a pick me. Yeah, Lopez with two fouls. Pick a foul that time, both of them kind of smacked into him. Avent gets it down low, nice turnaround shot. Avent's playing well. Tied up once again, 45 apiece, just under the 15 minute mark, second half. A tempo game. Avent now starting to fire it up 15 points. A streaky game, too. Spurdy offensive game. That's a bad shot. Eight. Now, that's, that's a bad call. Because you should not allow an offensive guy on a terrible shot like that to be rewarded for some free throws because he does not deserve to get to the free throw. That was an... You can't give him a free throw. And that was a terrible offensive move by Prelo. Prelo obviously looking to draw the foul. If Caver doesn't stick his hand up, they don't call that. Now, you want to give him and watch this. He didn't even leave his feet. He initiated the contract. That should be an offensive foul. See, I think he was going into it. 
Now you're an offensive player. You'd think I'm a former referee. You're right. <laughs> Prelu now with 20 points on the night. 10 this half already. 10 points, as a matter of fact, in five minutes and change, Michael. That's how that time. There's some people in the crowd chanting three shots, but the officials ruling that he was inside the three-point line. That was a shot. Of course, that that's a, one of the new rules this year. Mm -hmm. That was a gift two points, as far as I can concern, from Seton Hall, from uh, Fordham. Rams back on top by two. Half-court pressure. Looking to trap there at half-court. With the freshman, too. Now they're back in the zone. 2-3. Two, three. Jerry Walker. Nice pass to Avent. Oh, he's got that jump hook down pretty bad. He's starting really to erupt 17 points for Avent. Get the idea that Lopez and uh, Jenkins are a little concerned about foul trouble, too, because he's being getting those shots uncontested. Locked, beautiful play from Bryant Caver, though Jenkins gets the ball. Excellent defense from the freshman from Trenton. Herzog's been unable to get on track so far here in the second half. Either they're not looking for him or Winchester's doing a great job defensively. Look at Brian Caver get up. Some rebounding help from the guards. Pass inside and a foul against Lopez. That's his third. That was an excellent bounce pass that time by Caver, wasn't it? You bring McBride in if you're uh, McCarchick? Rice, who did not start the second half, is back in there. Now, we saw when Seton Hall played Iona over the weekend, because it was at Seton Hall's gym, they had the right to play the six fouls like they do in the Big East. I don't believe they're playing that tonight. Sloppy play continues. Marco Lokar, three-pointer. He's a good shooter. This is a very big shift down the court here for this Seton Hall defense and the Florida offense. And the Pirates back up by three points. Bad pass from Herzog. Caver leads the break. Slice and moves. That was a bad shot by Caver that time. He didn't have to do that. He's got the momentum a little bit. Avent's been all over the place, and he went right down the middle. There's a set play for Pedro in that corner. John Pedro, the junior, on fire tonight. Herzog comes off the screen. Can't get the bounce. Rebounded by Lopez, and a foul! One of the few offensive rebound baskets to see that uh, Fordham has had tonight, Michael. Lopez with a chance for a three-point play. Not a bad shot by Herzog, but look at Lopez. Got good position, Avan jumped too soon. And they got him out across the arm. Avan better off letting him go that time, giving him the dunk. So Avent, who picked up two quick ones in the first half, picks up his third. He's going to sit down for a little bit as Arturis Karnishevis checks back in. Lopez will go to the line for one. Damon Lopez, who did not play high school basketball. He was a quarterback at Cardinal Hayes. Cardinal Hayes of the Rocks. He's a, pretty big, he's a pretty big quarterback, I'll tell you. Cardinal Hayes with some pretty impressive plays. Jimmy Black, who played at North Carolina, who stint in the NBA. Jamal Mashburn, who's now playing for Rick Pitino with Kentucky, all out of Cardinal Hayes. Rick Pitino says Mashburn, the best 17-year-old ball player he has ever seen. We're tied again at 50. Substitutions again. Dewey Stinson is checked back in for Fordham. And Black was the point guard in the 82 NCAA championship North Carolina ball club. Kevin McBride also wins. Lopez will sit down with those three fouls, as does Avon with his three for Seton Hall. Small team right now for uh, Seton Hall. Karnishevis, three-pointer. Karnishevis can be a good player. His second three-pointer, he's got eight overall. I don't think he has sat down yet either. You know that? He's played like played this whole game. Kevin McBride, a little head fake. Freelo gets came way up in the air. Karnishevis. Another rebound. Gordon Winchester. Offensive foul. That's a foul, though, if you're PJ. You can't be too upset about it. That's an aggressive foul by Winchester. Goes right to the lane. Fourth foul against Winchester. And Terry DeHair will finally check back in the game. There's no question the ankle's got to be bothering him, first of all. Has to be. Only two for seven from the field. That was at the half. And then he sprained it against Iona. He's limping right now, though. No, maybe he's not limping, but he... No, he is. He's n he is limping. 
Yeah, he is a little bit. Twelve minutes to play. Fordham now trailing by three. They led by as many as seven in the first half. This three-point lead, the largest for Seton Hall here in the second half. And first time we have seen a three-guard offense at the same time here for Fordham in this half. They have Stinson in, Pizan in, and Palo in in this second half. First time we've seen the three guards for the Rams. Garnishev has called for a foul off the ball. Mickey Crowley's seen that there's a lot of physical play off the ball, so he's looking to tighten it up. Here's the... So the Rams now down by three. 11.51 to play. The here on Sports Channel. To the good life. To live the good life, you have to pay the price. The average new car costs over $15,000. But there's a motor oil that can protect your investment under extreme conditions when conventional oils won't. Mobile One. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? To the good life. Protect the environment. Take your used motor oil to an approved used oil collection center. We have a long way to go in the fight against HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. HIV is spread by sharing needles and through sex with an infected person. Today, there's a good chance you know someone with HIV. People with HIV can look just as healthy as anyone else. You can't tell if someone is infected with the virus just by looking at them. In fact, the person you're with right now might have HIV. Talk to your partner about HIV. Learn how to prevent HIV infection. Call 1-800-342. 5350 here in the second half. Seton Hall has lead. Here's our last foul call on Konishevis. No question about it. Little Lauren, a little push off by Jenkins, but... Well, we see Karnisha was holding him first, then Jenkins got fed up. I could have called that one. But again, Mickey Crowley trying to clamp down on those fouls right now. As Caver has done an excellent job defensively. Oh. Lopez. Jerry Walker comes away with a loose ball. Need to make those shots. He made a good point that time, Mike, about Caver. He has done a very good job on uh, Prelu here in the second, the last four or five minutes. Terry DeHair. up to five, largest for Seton Hall here in the second half. DeHair only seven points, but again, he's played sparingly because of that tender ankle. And he's not guarding Prelu on the off on the defensive end. Dewey Stinson from three. Marco Lokar on the boards. Three guards in for the Pirates with DeHair, Lokar, and Caver. This would be a big basket out here, Michael, for Seton Hall. If they get a seven-point lead halfway through half number two. This would be a big trip down the court for both these teams. Three guards for Fordham, too. Stinson, Hassan, as Jerry Walker called. Block against Lopez, and it will count. Chance for another three-point play is Jerry Walker with a powerful move to the hole. That was a great move by Walker. Again, only four-year starter ever at St. Anthony's, and no question about it, Lopez was late getting to the spot. And Lopez's fourth foul, he will sit down with 10.56 to play. Kevin McBride checks back in, and the lead now up to seven for the Pirates. Walker two for two from the free throw line tonight. As you see, Lopez now going to have to sit for quite some time with the four fouls. You see how, how Fordham struggles, Michael, offensively, when Pelu can't score and there's no Herzog. They have nobody to get big baskets off offensively. Herzog has been quiet this whole second half. Extremely quiet as Walker completes a three-point play, and now an eight-point lead for Seton Hall. Fordham in a little bit of trouble here. Still plenty of time, they just under 11 minutes. They changed that, if you've noticed, off the inbounds. Herzog is no longer inbounding the basketball. They're going to a guard to do it, and they've had a little bit of success. Jerry Walker calls for the foul. Nice sportsmanship between Herzog and Walker. As Jerry kind of says, I got you. Herzog did not start last year. Good player. 16 foul against the Hall. 
Boy, Avent can really roam on defense now because he's Gordon McBride, who's not a factor. A lot of block shots, maybe. Both teams with 16 fouls, so each club will be in the bonus on the next foul. That's not an offensive foul. Fordham needs to get their crowd back in the ball game a little bit. Exactly. Freelou drives baseline and is fouled. They could call it on either Caver or Avon. And again, some nice sportsmanship from Brian Caver. Second foul on Caver. Prelo will shoot two. That is the defensive move of the night, as far as I see it right now here in this second half by PJ. Getting Caver on Prelu and getting the hair off him. Because after he hit those three threes, he was hot and he went to Caver. And Caver's done a very good job. You, you hit it right on the top. Excellent defensive job on. John here the last five, six minutes. Well, Prelo's the type of guy that can create his own shot, so the way to defend him is to deny him the ball. You can't let him get the ball because once he gets it, he has that ability to create his own shots. It's now three of five from the free throw line. It's the game's leading scorer at 21 points. As P.J. Carlissimo likes the way things have shaped up here in part of the second half. 58-51. Seton Hall by seven, ten and a half to play. Double teamed as the Rams put on the defensive pressure. The hair passes ahead to Caver. McBride on the rebound. Got to hit those layups, Michael. That was a big miss. Seton Hall gets back on D in a hurry. McBride, pretty pass for Stinson. Can't get it to go. Stinson's had a very tough night offensively. He has not really helped them at all. Missing a couple of those shots. They missed a two-on-one lamp in the first half. Again, somebody right in his face. Every shot contested. Marco Lokar, three-pointer. Herzog loses the rebound. McBride battles. Hell ball, all to the possession. Goes to Fordham. Jay, we've seen some good minutes from Kevin McBride tonight. Yes, we have. He yes, started have. the game for Lopez, and because of the foul trouble for Lopez, has, has really done a solid job while he's out there. Well, we have seen he got the last basket of the first half, too. Only 17 points for Fordham in the first 10 minutes of the second half. We're we midway up, through the second half. After up 34 30 at the half. Blocked by Jerry Walker. See, Herzog, that doesn't happen in the Patriot League. DeHair, three pointer. Good boxing out from McBride enabled Herzog to get that rebound. Crowd starting to get back into it. McBride, an offensive board. Gets called for travel. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Been some breakdowns offensively here, second half, Michael from Fordham. They did a lot of one on one stuff, a lot of first shot opportunities. That's why they've struggled. 58-51, Seton Hall still with that seven-point lead. Hey, Caver's going to be a good, good college player. Anybody who can come in as a freshman and play this kind of defense, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's John Thompson-type defense. This team is so young and so talented in a couple of years, boy, they are going to be something special. Low card, tough move. Avent gets his own rebound. Jenkins almost takes it away, but a foul, and it counts. That's just bad luck for the Rams as they did a good job defensively. Gonna have to bring Lopez back in there with the four fouls because they are really having some problems on the offensive pass. Here he is again. Look, that's, not, that's a tough shot. Little fadeaway, 10-footer. There's Avant. Bright falls down. You know, Jenkins almost had the steal and then got sloppy with the reach after Avant held on. That's his fourth, too. We have seen a, a difference in this game. Also, been a lot of differences in this game, but another one is the Front court depth of Fordham. They don't have that much front court depth, but they get in foul trouble, Mike. Right? And that's why Lopez with four fouls is in his game with nine minutes to go. And after the Aza, Christopher starting to come on in the second half. He's five of six from the floor in the second half. 20 points overall, 13 in the second half, but misses the free throw. Still Seton Hall leads by nine. Dave Buckner back in the game for Fordham. That's for shooting purposes. They gotta get some offense. That's Buckner number 34. He's a good shooter. He's a very good shooter. As Prelo gets a breather. They have done a great job on Herzog in the second half. Either Winchester or Jerry Walker. And a foul against Kaver. That's a good call. He'll shoot the one and one. Third foul against Brian Kaver. That's the eighth team foul, so still not in the two-shot bonus. This Seton Hall team's got some 
you know, the, the bench is, you know, it, it, sometimes it's very good when you have your freshman that good coming off the bench because the one thing you're going to get out of him is enthusiasm. And Kaver is an enthusiastic player. And so is Walker off that bench. So that's a, sometimes I can go a long way. Jump start a ball club. So Walker's all over the place. He is a, I mean, you hear the phrase warrior for a player, but he is just, he is as intense as a kid you've ever seen. Again, he didn't play last year, sat out with Prop 48. This is his first year of college ball. Hassan hits both free throws. His first two points of the game. Rams pulled it within seven once again. Got the board at Caver. If you're a Seton Hall, let him break the press. Against Bruckner, who can't guard him. Not quick enough. Still over eight minutes to play. Seton Hall finding life. Bit of a struggle here on the road. Tough Rose Hill, Jim in the Bronx. Caver, three-pointer. Weak side rebound to Avent. And Jenkins with a pretty play to take it away. They're going to leave Caver open if you're a defense, and let's see if they can hit the three-pointers on you. Somebody got to give us up with the problems down low. You got to help out somewhere defensively. That's what they're going to help out. Herzog trying to get open. They've got him top of the key. And Fred Herzog finally gets on the board. His first two points of the second half. He's got 12 overall. Wow. Good defense by Lopez that time. Double team. Caver pulls up. That's tough, boy, when, when you throw it in double team and throw it back out and the guy can stick it. Well, if you afford him, you have to double team A, man, because you got your big guys in foul trouble, and the guy you're going to leave open is the freshman Caver. Let him beat you with jump shots. That's how he did. 62-55. Damon Lopez is fouled on his way to the hope. Got to be careful not to pick up an offensive big guy dribbling like that is a little dangerous. You very rarely, though, let's face it, I mean, you're the ref, you tell me. You very rarely will see a big player or a star player pick up his fifth foul on an offensive foul. Let's know he's got four fouls. See, just, I disagree you with don't? you. During the course of the game, you don't know he's got the four? pace is so fast. Number one, you shouldn't know. I mean, sometimes you figure it out. But because you just have to react to a call, you don't think to yourself. You don't have the time to think, oh, it's his fourth foul. I can't give him a fifth on a call like this. Subconsciously, you don't look this off where I got to give Lopez a break on the offensive end with the four fouls? No, you can't think that way. I'm not saying it never happens. But in most cases, no, these guys are trained enough where they just concentrate. And they're just reacting to what's going on in the court. These guys move too fast for you to, to think before you call like that. All right. Well, there are exceptions. Yeah, they are all strong of our era. <laughs> So Lopez from the free throw line. And the Rams, again, cut the deficit to five. 7-12 to play, still plenty of time. Seton Hall up 62-57. of U.S. Air's fleet is in the air by 8 a.m. every business day. Fontaine and the Islanders battle the Capitals Saturday at 7.30, live and exclusive right here on Sports Channel. 62-57, the Fordham Rams trailing by five. 7-12 to play here at the Rose Hill Gym of the Bronx. Nick McCarchick, as we mentioned earlier, getting a multi-year contract extension today as he does the good job for the Rams. Of course, the women's basketball team also doing some good things here at Fordham. And they had a little presentation at halftime to honor them. There's Frank McLaughlin in the back, the Fordham Athletic Director, handing out some trophies. And Heather Donlin uh, receiving it. She led the nation in three-point percentage last season. And Coach Luke Kern did a terrific job. So congratulations to some people involved with the Lady Rams. And McLaughlin was the assistant to Digger here back in 20 years ago when Fordham had that great run. McLaughlin always willing to pose. <laughs> Frank does a great job here at Fordham. 
under the seven minute mark. Five point lead for Seton Hall. That's, Sanford Jenkins, just not a smart foul. And that's his fifth, I believe. And if it is, he's gone. That's his fifth. Well, Jenkins, his freshman year, set a record, a Fordham record, by foul, fouling out 11 times. His sophomore year, he really improved, only fouled out six times. And here tonight is disqualified. Nick's got a minute, I believe. Yep, he's got the minute to put someone in. You know, that's a, bad, that's a bad foul by Jenkins. You should never foul somebody 30 feet from the basket as he did right here. That, 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 that foul makes absolutely no sense when you're down five, seven minutes to go, and over the limit. A little frustrated tonight for Jenkins. Fouls out with two points. How many rebounds? Not many. But again, he's come a long way in the foul trouble, but not tonight against a very physical Seton Hall team. Well, this, this game has been ugly at times as Jerry Walker will shoot the one and one. But it's been ugly because of great defense. So a missed free throw. And missed free throws are going to be an important element at the end of this game. It's both are over the limit with six minutes to play. And Terry DeHair just leaning a little bit on for Sam. Frank Scagliotti with the call. So back to the free throw line. That is the 10th team foul, so the Rams will shoot two free throws. This game was 59-50 not so long ago, and now it's... has a chance to make it 62-59 for uh, How do you pronounce his name? Pazan. Pazan. Pazan, three for three from the free throw line tonight. Good little player. Good third guard. Really kind of starts because Rice... Lots of times doesn't play that much he, after he starts. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Might not create as much sometimes, but doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And he created a couple of baskets in the first half on all penetration. Rams back in this one. Three-point lead for Seton Hall, six and a half to play. Crowd getting back into it. Man-to-man -man defense. Big size advantage for the Lithuanian on Pelo. Lopez, good defense with the four fouls. The hair three-pointer. And Avent does not get boxed out, but loses control of the ball. But well, that is a very bad shot if you're a Seton Hall. When you have a three-point lead with six minutes to go, you do not need to be shooting three-point field goals. Especially with Lopez. With, with four, four fouls. fouls. You go to the main man, Avent, inside. Very, very bad shot by De Gea that time. De Gea, one of six from three-point range, three of 11 from the floor overall tonight. He has really struggled shooting-wise. This, this is a big possession right now. Still plenty of time, 5.50 to play, 62-59, Seton Hall on top. Lopez turns around, Caver on the rebound. Don't like your big men turning away from the basket and shooting. Like them go right to the hole and force contact. And the Pirates will set her up again. See, Fordham has problems now because they're down and they have to play a little man-to-man -man and the quickness aspect of Seton Hall, a, much, a big advantage for them, especially this matchup with Herzog against the air. It's a tough spot here for the Fordham defense, Mike. They have answered the call pretty much all night, though. Nick McCartrick's team, even when he was up at Canisius, always known for their defensive play. You like this play by P.J. up three, ten seconds? You're milking the clock a little bit? So I give everybody a little bit of a rest. DeHair draws the foul against Herzog. Again, you don't like to give it, but uh, good job by DeHair in drawing that personal. Herzog's third foul. See, Freddie, again, he leaves his feet. Don't leave your feet, you get a lousy shot attempt. You leave your feet and you come in and you have contact, Mike, there's going to be foul. Watch, watch Freddie leave his feet. Right there. Boom. Look at the corner. DeHair's first trip to the free throw line. He's got eight points tonight. 6-4, sophomore. These are scary games for P.J. and Seton Hall. You know that? Big East, on the road, against a team that's in a lower-level conference. Well, for Fordham, I mean, this is one of their key games on the schedule outside of the conference. You know, the big, big East team, is that really helps at the end of the year when tournaments come looking and, and try and see some quality wins, whether it be NIT or NCAA. Or bad losses, and people in Shawnee Mission, Kansas, know, don't know, have no idea how good Fordham is, so a loss here really hurts them. Eight possession, Michael. Lead back up to five. Seton Hall with the defense. So look what a job Caver's doing on Pelo. I mean, he is really, he is, he's been, he, since those three threes, he's been anything. He is really stuck to Prelo. 
Well, he's hitting the shot clock. The sand. The penetration draws it. Herzog, three-pointer. Two-point lead for Seton Hall. 15 points for Herzog. He's starting to warm up a little bit. That was a big basket. 64-62 Pirates. Bad play by Lopez. Jerry Walker on the glass is fouled. He'll call it on the ground, but it's a 10th foul, so he'll get two shots anyway. And that's Lopez's fault. You don't go for steals against Anthony Avant 20 feet from the home, Mike. Take a look at this. You can't go for a steal there. Who's going to help him out? Well, the thing is, Anthony Avent is certainly not going to shoot from out there. There's no need to deny him the ball out there, unless you know you got the steal. But that's that's a, a poor defensive decision. Especially with four fouls, because you can easily knock into him, and you're going to get your fifth foul 20 feet from the basket. And then you create a mismatch underneath for your teammates. Walker was able to get the board. He'll get two shots. Again, he gets two shots because it's the 10th team foul, not because he was in the act of shooting. One of the, the new rules of college basketball that we've talked about. Seton Hall in game one was a 65% free throw shooting team against Iona. Walker. That will be a factor down the stretch. Gordon Winchester to check back in, 66-62. Rams battling back. They still trail by four. 3.57 to play here in the Bronx. Considering all the people we serve, all the places we go, and all the times we go there, it would take a lot of airlines to be U.S. Air. U.S. Air, America's most frequent... Yeah? You could say my future here looks great. They like my work. I got a promotion. I've got great benefits and profit sharing. But, let's face it, jobs don't come with a lifetime guarantee anymore. Today, you've got to cover your own future. And I have. Life insurance for living from Northwestern Mutual Life. Ranked first in dividend performance more times than any other company over the last 50 years. The quiet company. That's big John McSherry there, Mike. Not a bad umpire it is. Major League Baseball. Veteran National League umpire who loves the game of basketball. You see him down at the garden for the college basketball games. He lives in the Bronx, was born in the Bronx. You see him a lot at the uh, local college basketball scene. And don't forget, the umpire's agreement is run out with the Major League owners and that's a Major League Baseball. That's going to be a point of contention in the off year. Another great uh, off-the-field story we'll have to endure. Mm -hmm. McSherry enjoying a good game tonight. Here on Sports Channel 66-62, Seton Hall with a four-point lead with 3.40 to play. Prelu trying to get a shot. Brian Caver, just fabulous defense. They let, I think it should let Fasans penetrate and dish off like he did the last time. The hair is out of there defensively. They got Oliver Taylor back in because the hair's ankle, the last sequence, had some problems, and Fasans got that three for Freddie. And Jerry Walker all over Herzog. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Herzog, the baseline jumper. Taylor on the rebound. That one looked like it was going down. Looked a little hesitant pulling a trigger on that. That's a big miss. See, that's one of the few times that the shot clock has even come close to running out. But Brian Kaver on John Pringo. What a job. Huh? Really has shut him down after that explosive couple of minutes. Seton Hall being patient. Four-point lead. Again, any foul, a two-shot foul, because they're over the 10 foul mark for the team. Quick move by Kaver. Kaver, and no. Kaver called for the offensive foul off the pass. Oh, I don't like that. Kevin McBride stepped in and picked it up. Boy, I'm not too sure about that at all. That was a great, quick move by Kaver. Plato had a quick who came up with him. Let's take a look. His momentum carries him into McBride. Now, maybe a little bit of acting, but there was contact. 
and because it's not a player control foul, because he released the ball, he made the contact after he released the ball, you go down the other end and shoot the two. The reason the two again, because it's 10 team fouls on Seton Hall. McCarthy did get to the spot. I mean, he did get knocked over, but... Held his ground. The Rams now 12 of 14 from the free throw line as this is becoming a free throw shooting contest. The head will come back into the offensive end on the next sequence. The big man showing a good shooting touch. And we've got a two-point game as Terry DeHair checks back in. Interesting how P.J. is letting his freshman Caver stay in the ball game and letting Oliver Taylor, his senior point guard, not play in this situation two and a half minutes to play. Well, Caver is the better defensive player. 2.25 to play. Two-point lead for the Pirates. Man-to-man -man defense from the Rams. by Lopez. Lope, uh, Herzog was now looking for the ball. Couldn't find it. Would have been seen home. Would have been for the basketball. He's got enough to worry about <laughs> guarding Terry <laughs> DeHair. He's got that idea. Here's Lopez way out guarding Avent again. Four seconds on the shot clock. Three seconds. Brad Kaver, Avent the rebound. Can't get it to go. The battle. Kaver's got it. What a sequence, a minute 40 to play. Right. Two point lead for Seton Hall. Bottoms had their chances here to get that loose pumpkin. Great defensive sequence from the Rams that time. Prelo almost the steal. Under a minute and a half to play. Excellent man-to-man -man defense by Fordham. Maybe they were capable of this against this quick team. 66-64. Pirates led by as many as nine, and they'll call timeout with a minute and 11 to play, 12 seconds on the shot clock, two-point lead for the Pirates. This place gets loud. Interesting here there, Michael, though. On the last two or three trips down the court, Seton Hall has let the clock run out, and then with about seven or eight, nine seconds, I've almost forced some things offensively, and I've taken a couple of tough shots. Caver's shot in the right corner there. They got the offensive rebound, but not a great shot. The interesting to see here, PJ says, with 12 seconds on the shot clock, hey, first available good shot, shoot the basketball, let's not wait for the three or four second thing with on the clock. No. First, op first opportunity, shoot the basketball. Well, you don't have time, especially if your first option doesn't work. You want to have a couple of seconds at least to go to that second option. I never like it when teams make their penetration move with five seconds to go on a shot clock because nine times out of ten, they get a bad shot. All right, the situation, two-point lead for Seton Hall. Now here, they're going to do that. Ten seconds, look where he is. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds, Caver drives. Good defense, two seconds. Caver heaves it up. Lopez on the rebound, and a foul against Gordon Winchester. Winchester's fifth foul, he's done. That is a terrible offensive sequence for Seton Hall. First off, Mike, they made the first mistake by inbounds the ball behind the half-court line, and then Caver's got to force a 25-footer. Why would 12 seconds to go, would you inbounds the ball on, the, on your side of half-court with the shot clock? It appeared that Caver wasn't aware that there was only a small amount of time on the shot clock. He should have been, they just had a timeout. He so should have been, they just caught a timeout. Obviously, he should have been, but I really believe he didn't know. As Winchester sits down with five fouls, he's out of the game, finished with six points and some excellent defense. Damon Lopez goes to the free throw line where he is three for three. He'll get two shots, 57 seconds to play, Rams down by two. 75% shooter. Also important, Seton Hall, uh, Fordham will get the ball back with our last opportunity, regardless what happens on this free throw. Tie game. That's your time remaining. There's about an 
seven second differential on the shot clock, so Seton Hall cannot hold it for the last shot. I don't like this offense. First good shot taken. Run your offense if you're Seton Hall. 20 seconds on the shot clock. This is not good. We have seen the last three or four trips down and had problems with this. The Rose Hill Gym crowd on its feet. We're tied at 66 with 25 seconds to play in the game. And again, just 14 seconds on the shot clock for Seton Hall. So either way, Fordham will have a chance to get the ball back unless obviously Seton Hall gets an offensive rebound and comes up with a steal right away. With only one timeout left, Fordham still with three. First thing's important here if you're PJ. With 14 seconds left of the shot clock, do not inbounds the basketball on your side of half court. Because the time to get it across the tar line and the top of the key, you're wasting four or five seconds and you throw a bad shot up. That's what they did last time. Let's see what they do here this time. 66-66. Fordham and Seton Hall deadlocked in the Bronx with 25 seconds to play. But again, the Pirates, only 14 seconds on the shot clock. Defense, 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 they look confused again. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Jerry Walker drives the lane. Anthony Avent. It goes. Ten seconds in the game. Timeout, Fordham. Been a good play that time for Avent. Got the layup. Good job by P.J. and that timeout. So Nick McCarchick wanted to make sure they would inbound at half court. They get it up the court and still have certainly plenty of time to get a decent shot off. They've got to go right to it. Seven seconds to play in the game. Anthony Avent gives his team a two-point lead. Excellent move by Walker right through the paint. Found the open man at Avent. Lopez wants to go help out. And ace the bunny by Avent. Excellent play by Jerry Walker that time. Lopez wants to go help him. Left Avent. There's your layup. So Nick McCarchick diagramming the final play for the Rams. Let's talk about it. What do you do? Prelude one-on-one, -on -one, let him throw up a prayer. A little penetration by Fazan's dishing off to Herzog for a jumper in the corner. What would you do in this situation? Well, obviously, since he's down by two, he doesn't have to go for the three-pointer. I'd say try and get it in, unless you can't get a, an open jumper for one of your guys like a preload. Try to get it inside and at least maybe draw a foul. Two free throws. It's not a one-on-one. -on -one. It's two free throws. This is a great game. Excellent second half. These two teams have gone at it a number of times, and it always seems to be an excellent contest. Kevin McBride will inbounds. Prelu is 6 of 10 from three-point range. Fazans is on. De, De Hair's on Fazans with a bad ankle. Let's see if they... The timeout. And Nick McCarchick wanted to see what defense that Seton Hall set up. He saw the man-to-man. And he calls another timeout. Each team now with one timeout remaining. Interesting status here. The hair with the bad ankle is on Fazan's. If you're PJ, would you get Oliver Taylor in there? And we've seen Fazan's penetrate and dish off for layups with the hair on him this, this evening. So maybe you get Oliver Taylor in there to go to Fazan's. If you don't, maybe for Renick say, okay, Jay, you got the ball. You look to penetrate, something there, shoot it, get fouled. If not, Freddie in the left corner, shoot a jump shot. Well, De Hare, and this is no knock on Ollie Taylor, De Hare, like Caver, is a, is a much better defensive player. Now, we don't know again how much the ankle is bothering him. You know, P.J. looks at him and says, hey, look, can you give me one more strong defensive effort if you hope the guy can do it? But that's a good point because Hassan has been able to drive by him a couple of times when he's guarded. Let's see. So P.J. Carlissimo knew it was going to be tough here on his return to Fordham. His team leads by two, 68-66. Fordham has the ball with seven seconds remaining. Both teams in the bonus. So any foul will be a two-shot foul. The sand drives the lane. Pilu has it. Fires it up.
the three-pointer at the buzzer. Jim Fordham, the 69-68 victory, and the Rams beat the Pirates for the second year in a row. Unbelievable. The one-on-one penetration by Plano and Caber, who did such a good job for him all day long. He threw up the prayer, and it went down. Wow. Prelo finishes with 25 points, 7 of 11 from three-point range. Look and at the, the thing about it, he was right in his face. He had a man right in his face. We, we thought they'd go to Fazanz. He did penetrate. Good defense by Day Harry. He had nowhere to go. Prelo had to do a one-on-one move at the gun. What a shot that was and a big moment for Florida basketball.